Last night, NASCAR would race at Richmond. Easter Sunday, it was a big deal, and a lot of people were talking about it. But unfortunately, we're all talking about the race for, well, negative reasons, I think would mostly be the cause. And I think that what we saw last night in some ways was unacceptable. And I think it needs to be delved into more. And while I was able to do so last night live after the race, once you have more time to digest it and go back and watch stuff more in depth, you start seeing more issues. Anyways, for me, I was more or less kind of just gradually getting more and more pessimistic about it the more and more I saw about it. But before any of that, I want to look at the one really good thing because I think we should at least have some positivity in this. And that's the initial laps on the wet tires. To me, it's amazing what happens when there is more horsepower than grip in these cars. I saw that on Twitter, and I think it was really hitting the nail on the head with that one. To me, this kind of shows the direction that I think Goodyear and NASCAR can go when it comes to making maybe a softer tire, or at least a tire that has fall off in grip throughout a run. I get that it's not a one-to-one -one by any means, but it's something that, again, just like Bristol, can show how good short track racing can be made. Unfortunately, this was only the opening 30 laps, and while racy and fun, 30 laps does not make a 407 lap race good. And unfortunately, the last 377 laps of this race were pretty ugly, boring, bad, whichever word you want to give for it, that's probably what it was. So let's get to the bad, unfortunately. First off, the way NASCAR handled these wet tires. Requiring a non-competitive pit stop, I get, I guess, when it comes to safety reasons, but when you also then look at the fact that other racing series, some of which that NASCAR runs around the world that race in the rain, can do competitive pit stops no problem without turning pit crews into bowling pins, well, then at that point, I'm kind of wondering what NASCAR's long-term thinking was with this. Was it thinking, just get the damn race started and we'll go from there? Because if that's the case, that's a problem. I think that requiring a non-competitive pit stop really kind of takes a lot of that oomph factor out of the way early. And when you draw the caution out as well, wasting a lot of time and laps, well, then it just continues that trend. We already have a long enough break with stage breaks. It felt like we had three last night. In my opinion, there needs to be a true protocol put in place for rain. True testing when it comes to pit stops, maybe not with live pit crews right away, but to see what is pushing the edge and what is the amount of wetness, precipitation, whatever you want, that will make it unsafe and safe to both race and pit in because that's a real problem when you have to basically draw out 20 caution laps so you can dry off pit road well you're going to lose a lot of people on tv and you're going to lose a lot of people in the stands but the race at least strategy wise did start playing out to be more fun at least in the first say 40% of it. What kind of ruined the race, not kind of, it did ruin the race, was Kyle Busch's quote-unquote caution. I'm just going to say it right now. This was not a caution, and it ruined the race for a lot of people. I think Alex Bowman was really the poster child of this, but so too was Kyle Larson never being able to reestablish the track position that he had lost in this kind of pit cycle. This really reminds me of Phoenix with Haley Deacon. She didn't hit the wall. We all know it. NASCAR knows it. She knows it, but they called a caution for it, and unfortunately, it ruined people's races. NASCAR has been better in the last few years, but I gotta say, there's a lot of room for improvement. Now, the biggest thing we're gonna be talking about all week long, and maybe throughout the season, is Denny's restart. To me, Denny Hamlin jumped this restart. I don't see any way really around it. When you look at a lot of the replays about it, Yes, I can kind of get NASCAR's mentality of it being very bang, bang, and maybe that's not why they called it a fair restart, or maybe that is. But what I don't get is not reviewing it at all. I think that just as how every scoring play in the NFL has to be reviewed, I think each restart should. And I want to kind of show you the example, because I can say it so much, but you'll think I'm just a Denny hater, or maybe you'll just finally agree with me. There needs to be the evidence, and it was shown by a couple of people who got the replays and put them on Twitter. 
you went early. So you in 11, stay in your lane. So you in 11, two off the two wide. Still inside. Still in there. Be ready for him to carry you. Still inside, two off to the 22 out back. Still inside, one off 22. Inside 22. To me, if you don't see that that was at least by all technicalities a jumped restart, I don't know what to tell you. I do, again, get, maybe not agree, but get why NASCAR wouldn't call it a jumped restart just because it's very bang, bang. They don't want to make a big deal. But I think a lot of it also has to do with the fact that this is a big audience on Easter Sunday. And frankly, they probably don't want to have a giant controversy end the night and have a large audience leave only seeing that the guy they thought won actually didn't. Now, the other major thing we need to talk about with the finish of that race is Martin Truex Jr. In an odd way, Truex completely raged out. And yeah, it's cool and normal to see that in the car. He yells at people who are right in front of him and race him like a normal race car driver does. But to see it bleed out and basically go from just words to action is very uncharacteristic of Martin Truex Jr. And I'm not saying it's something that's really damning on him. It's just it's very early in the season for anyone to be lashing out like this, hitting Denny Hamlin, hitting Kyle Larson, and just frankly raging out. But I think it's something to watch when it comes to maybe his retirement talks, because if it's already mentally wearing him down seven races into a 36 race season, there could be some real long-term questions that need to be posed. But I think all of this leads to one talking point that's been coming around for a while, but I think thanks to Jordan Bianchi talking about it on the Teardown podcast, as well as many fans talking about it and the poor showings this track has had, Richmond needs just one date. There's not the demand at the track for it with attendance. This track has had attendance woes for a long time. This track used to sell out every single year back in the day, 110, 112,000 seats. And now, granted it being a holiday and all and it raining, they probably didn't even have 25,000 there based on the aerial shots. Right now, racing wise, I get it. It's the car that's a problem, but let's not pretend that we've all loved Richmond all the way up until 2022. Let's not pretend that the last great race there that we can all remember is 2014 and that we only look back at that race's finish as well as maybe the finish in 2016 between Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch. Let's not play pretend on this one. A lot of people have been saying this for a long time. It's been nearly a decade since the last universally liked race, been a decade since the most universally loved race, and there's just not the demand anymore. The summer date, I think, could be really good for Montreal or Chicagoland. Chicagoland, I will admit I'm biased on, but it's owned by ISC, just like Richmond is, and there's a good amount of fan demand for it, but there just isn't for tracks like Kentucky, per se, and it fits really well in kind of widening out the general scope of where NASCAR goes. And I get it, yeah, there's two Chicago dates, but the Chicago street course isn't a lockdown thing long-term either. The big one I think it's going to be is Montreal. It's a new market. You're going outside the country. And NASCAR has wanted this and hinted at this for a long time. I think that when 2025 rolls around, or at least when the schedule is released, we're going to see Montreal where Richmond's second date is now. But with that, I want to pass it on to you and ask, what are your thoughts on Richmond, both as a track overall and this race in particular? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thanks so much. To all my channel members for your continued support, and thank you so much for hitting 75K with me. It was an amazing experience to see live. So until next time, have a good one.